everybody. We're ready to get started here. All right. All right. Woo! 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 I'm the District of South Division Governor Mary Smith. more time 
time for the judges to mark your ballot and complete them. Please ensure that you sign and date them. <coughs> Stay in the room as much as you can, but you don't want to miss anything. I promise you, if you do, you'll miss a lot. And now that we got that all out the way, Madam Division Governor, fellow Toastmasters, let the contest begin. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. The concept of a journey is one that's seen frequently in literature. And I think the most important journeys that we take are not physical journeys. Although the physical journey is often used as a metaphor for something that happens within. One of the best books I ever read in regards to the Spiritual Journey was a book called Zen and the Ark of Motorcycle Maintenance. <laughs> now you may ask yourself, what does maintaining a motorcycle have to do with the journey? But the author, Robert Persick, talks about his inner journey. He was on a motorcycle trip with his young son, who was very troubled, and would later eventually commit suicide. But Persick was also on a journey fighting back from mental illness. And in it, he talks about the dichotomy between the classic and the romantic schools of thought. It's a lot of heavyweight stuff. But the journey that I would most like to complete is the journey toward being the sort of man that God wants me to be. This is a journey that I haven't completed yet, well, it's taken me 55 years to get where I am. Now, you may say, why is it taking so long? 
Because 35 years ago, I gave my life to God and said, I want you to take control of my life. But I'm stubborn. I'm one of those guys that says, Lord, I know I gave you control of my life, but give me the steering wheel. I want to steer for a while. <laughs> and I end up on the rocks, and he slaps me upside the head and says, see what I tell you. So we're making progress, little by little. But this, I believe, is the most important journey that anyone will take. And God willing, I will complete it successfully. Madam Topic Master. Contestant number two, Ron Lord. called to do sick. I have actually driven much farther though. I've driven all the way to Alaska, to Fairbanks, which is a big city. But the one trip that I wanted to do was from Fairbanks to Dead Horse, which is as close as you can get to the Arctic Ocean driving, because otherwise a polar bear might eat you. <laughs> I have always wanted to go the approximate 500 miles from Fairbanks to Dead Horse, but it's not a road trip. Three, three spare tires fully inflated you're supposed to take from Fairbanks to Dead Horse. How are you going to pack any food, any clothes? If I go to Dead Horse, you think I want to stay for one day? <laughs> I want to stay for a while. I want to go to the Arctic Ocean. I want to see polar bears. Kind of far away from me, but not, not too close. So, if you have to pack three spare tires, how are you going to do it? Take two cars? Well, then you need six spare tires. <laughs> but I've always wanted to do it. My buddy's mother worked at University of Alaska Fairbanks. I thought she could help us. He's a fellow Toastmaster. And if I could just do it, but I'm scared. I'm going to get a flat tire. There's going to be a semi coming over. There's no paved roads. There's one mile of paved roads in 500 miles. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get killed. But that's a journey I would really like to make. Go from Fairbanks, Alaska, the final 500 miles I could go to Dead Horse. Miss Toastmaster.
contestant number three, Sherry's Arlington. Sherry's Arlington. <laughs> dignitaries, friends, invited guests. If I had time for only one journey, what would it be and why? Hmm. If I had time for one journey, the journey would be traveling to a time and space that probably is not even existent in this moment of now. It would be a time where people are free, they can pursue happiness, the right to be, the right to express as they want to express. I would be in a time where life would be what I think it has been designed to be, and that is a sweet life, a good life. Don't we all agree that we should have a good life? Yes? Yes. 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 That is the time that I would be in. I would meet people who are like-minded, People who were in the heart, like God, I feel, has desired us to be, that we would look into the eyes of a stranger, and I would see you, as they do in Avatar, the movie. I see you. I understand your essence. I would be so happy, and I am happy now, but there is always something to strive higher for. There is always a degree to go higher. I'd be so welcoming, inviting. I would just want to hug up the world. So if I could be in another time and journey into another space and time, that is where I would be, in the place of I love you, in the place of you are my brother, you are my sister, in the place of all this well. Thank you. Contestant number four, Sarah Crowley. Sarah Crowley, contestant number four. Your question. If you had time for only one journey, what would it be and why? If you had time for only one journey, what would it be and why? Africa, they healed every community 
they were in. They knew what herb, what flower, what leaf, what tree to get the medicines from. And they passed it all down to me. So if I were to go back, the Civil War would be it. Because I would be living in the White House. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I would be in the White House as one of the renowned doctors. Not just a doctor, but a renowned doctor. The doctor who wipes away not only the president's disease, but whatever disease is in the White House. Madam All the okay. At this time, let's give all the contestants a big hand.
this thus far? Yes. yes. How many of you have attended our fall conference? Can you remember the keynote speaker? Yeah. Craig Valentine. Yeah. 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 Now, our spring conference is coming up April 26th and 27th. It's a conference you don't want to miss. Imagine meeting the person who taught this person to be the speaker that he is today. <coughs> And his journey to be the Toastmaster he is today, this woman charged $4,000 a day. Now he's currently on tour with her, a group called The Lady and Her Champs. The Lady and Her Champs consumes of Patricia Fripp, who is a world-renowned speaker, Greg Valentine, as well as Ed Tate, who also visited uh, one of our conferences in the past, and Darren LaCroix. So again, this is one conference you don't want to miss. Also appearing at our conference is Johnny Campbell, who is also the current speaker in our district. So again, this is a conference you don't want to miss, as well as the winner who's, who wins the International Speech Contest here. You could be possibly witnessing the next world champion, because the winner at our division will go on if they win at the district level, will compete in August at the World Championship in Cincinnati, Ohio. August All right. And the All right. All right.